Hey everybody, so I am absolutely here today. I'm so excited to be with you and I'm really glad that you've been able to join me. Uh, here I am in the studio again and today, wow, what are we going to do? Well, what we're really going to do today is we are going to talk about ideas and inspiration. And I'm going to need to move the uh, computer around a little bit and move the stream around a little bit for you um, as we move through the program today. I'd like to uh, remind you all that I am just one person here all by myself, all by my lonesome. And um, so sometimes I may not be able to keep up with what's going on in your comments in the stream, but I will stop throughout the program to ask if you have comments or questions and definitely take time to talk with you at that time. So the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about is, as you all know, I'm a shoemaker. And um, one of the things I was doing, which I do periodically, pretty much like at least once a week, over the weekend, what I was doing was I was looking at, um, you know, some inspiration and I was going through some catalogs that had come in the mail, some magazines that had come in the mail, looking at a number of different visual stimuli. And um, the other thing that I was doing is I have a favorite, 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 well, I have several favorite designers, shoe designers, and one of them is John Fluvog, and he had a couple new um, styles out that came up in my email. So I went to go look at those and it was really great and a lot of fun. So I got some inspiration. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about two separate sets of inspiration. So whatever your field is, if it is shoes or jewelry or clothing or um, home goods, whatever it is you're making, you need to understand what's going on in your field. And that's the part where I kind of think of it more as ideas as opposed to inspiration. Okay. So the first thing that I'd like to do is show you my idea book. And this is, well, um, first thing I want to do is show you some of the inspirations that I use. So a lot of times I have some books that I have on shoes and I just like to flip through them. And I flip through them a number of times. Some of these might be from a designer. Some of them might be this that's more all about shoes. So either way, it can be any kind of book that you have. It could also be any kind of sort of um, show that you have, I'm sorry, any kind of media that you have, any kind of catalogs that come to your house, any magazines that come to your house, and it can be online. And we'll talk about that in a second. Now, what I like to do is, because I'm kind of old school, I like to keep a book of ideas. And so one thing that I just want to show you is, is that sometimes I pull things out that I know that I'm not necessarily going to use, but they just make me happy. And this cowboy boot with this embroidery on it makes me happy. I don't know why. I mean, I do. The shape of the cowboy boot is very me. The cowboy boot itself is very me. I'm not really sure yet what interests me about the rest of it, but I'm going to keep this guy and it'll stick around and it'll stay in my head for a while and it'll stay in my vision for a while. And eventually I will figure out what to do with it. Now, this is my idea book. And I'm just going to show you, for example, I take these images and whatever it was that interested me, I start to bring that topic up. So what you might be able to see here is that we've got kind of slouch booties. Now, this was from maybe a year or two years ago. But what you'll see is I have a couple I haven't put in yet. Also, very slouch booty-esque. And here, while it's not a booty, it's still got the slouch. So what I end up doing is I'll put these in here and I'll add to it and I'll go back in and I'll tape them in and I'll make some notes. You'll also see that I have some that have little stickies in them. And these are sort of of the moment what I'm going to look into in terms of making. So I happen to love this 
shoe. I've wanted to make it for a while. And I happen to have some fabric that looks very much like what's going on here with all the flowers that I think I can make a great summer sandal in. So I'm going to um, sort of investigate that. It's on my list of things to make. Now, another thing that I do that I think you guys know about is I often like to use upcycled materials. I think I've talked about this, but I also challenge myself to make crazy things out of upcycled materials. So this is of great interest to me because these are plastic and vinyl. And um, I'm sorry, I got a message coming in from Neil. Um, and I'm just going to let him know that for some reason we're not live on um, YouTube today. I don't know. We're only on Facebook today. So I just wanted you to see that we've got this issue here um, where we're using plastics and vinyl. And so I'm very interested in how I might be able to do this and um, that it will be something that I can utilize in some of the other things that I do with my shoes outside of just for sales. The other thing, um, so let me just see what else I have uh, noted here because you might like to see some of these other ideas. Um, funny enough, here is another boot with kind of a slouch. But in this one, I was more interested in this overlay idea. Now, one of the reasons that I'm interested in this overlay idea is because I really am um, working on sort of uh, how to maximize the idea of the mule. And the mule, as you will remember, is something, a shoe you slide into. So I really want to push that mule. And again, if you're just um, seeing this for the first time, and welcome, Neil, I'm glad you found us. Uh, what I wanted to let you guys know is that we work on a last, and that last, a shoe is built around it. I happen to have one right here. So if you haven't seen it before, this is a last. And we'll talk about lasts again in another episode. But the important thing to understand is, if I build a shoe completely around, so a closed back shoe, I have to break this last. And there are some technical and physical implications there that make it much better for me just to work with a mule. So um, one other thing I wanted to show you about the idea book, because I think the idea book is an important thing for you all to have, is that here's another um, shoe that was interesting to me. And so what happened with this shoe is, I think you guys can probably see that it's got straps and it's got some straps that are woven together. So in my idea book, I have lots of pages that are strappy and I have some pages about wovens. I don't know where I want this to go yet. So again, I'm just going to keep this out on top of my book front and center along with this first one that I showed you that I just don't know what to do with because I'm not sure exactly what's so intriguing about it for me yet, aside from the fact that it's a shoe shape that I like. And eventually, I will pull these into my idea book. Now, the thing to remember about the idea book is it's only good if you refer back to it. So I like to refer back to it. I like to add into it. And I try to do that sort of like maybe, I would say once a week, once every two weeks. This is something that maybe while I'm having coffee on a Sunday, I'll just throw go through. Maybe even while I'm watching mindlessly something on TV, I'll just sort of flip through it. I also go to this when I get kind of stuck about what I want to do next. So Let's just recap on the ideas for one second. And let me remind you that you need to do with your ideas. These are things that you're learning about your field. So again, my field is shoes. So I am looking at things that are ideas about shoes. Slightly different from inspiration. So as I showed you, um, I have a number of books 
about shoes or with shoes in them. I collect books by shoe designers. I collect books on shoes. Some of them are big, some of them are small. Periodically, what I do is I just pull out one of these books. Sometimes I just flip to a page. This one didn't have a very good look to it, but if I go to the first page and see what it's about, it's a brogue. And so sometimes I may read about this brogue, I may just look at this brogue, I may think about this brogue, or I may say, eh, I don't wanna make a brogue or anything like a brogue. So I'm gonna go to something else like an UG, which is very appropriate from where I live right now. Okay, so again, I may look through, read something that I read might inspire me, something that I see might give me an idea. For example, here under the UG is a perforated UG. Now, let me just tell you one of the things is I don't wear the UGG brand UGG. I wear UGG like boots in the winter. And when they actually uh, wear out, I use them to recreate other things. So one of the things I really love about UGGs or UGG like boots is taking them apart and reusing the components for various other projects. So that's the first thing. Now, I also use, as I told you, a lot of catalogs or magazines that come to my house. And I am going to later in the program show you how I use the internet because obviously that's a place to do it, okay? But I wanted to just show you that there are the hard copy things. What I do, especially with magazines and catalogs that come to my house, is I pull out specific shoes. And you'll see this also in another iteration when we get to sort of my inspiration slash design board a little bit later on. I just wanted to make sure that you all saw that. And again, since you might be late to joining us, this is my idea book. What I do is I kind of put something in and I make notes about it. And as I go back through this, through the years, through the, you know, and I look back at something from several years ago, I may write more notes to it or I may add to that particular idea with another photo or two. Okay, so that's the idea of the idea book. Now I would like to talk to you about inspiration because inspiration is something that's all around us. It's something that um, if we're open to it, it's all around us. But inspiration is something that I think of as non-shoe related becoming a shoe. Okay, so I'm going to need to move you for a minute so that you'll be able to see what I'm about to physically do. And I will come back and get you when I'm done. But I just need to give you a little look-see at what I have. And this may mean you don't get to see me very well. Okay. How good you do? Okay. So... Uh, this will require me walking back and forth a little bit, but what I want to show you is, so this week, um, I just was going through some magazines. I wanted to get them into the um, uh, recycle bin, right? So I went, I decided I'd go through them and just see what I have. And I pull out just images that are interesting to me. And this is where I'm just looking for visually interesting things. Nothing necessarily shoe related. I don't care about trends. This is just to purely get me thinking and start to get me inspired. This actually is from a Louis Vuitton ad. And I don't know what I like about it, really. I mean, I just, I kind of like the shape. I think there's something interesting there to me. Okay, this is from a Philly style magazine and it may be hard for you to see, but um, what I really like in this particular view are these lights, the bubble lights that are hanging. I do a lot with architecture and objects when I'm pulling out inspirational photos. Um, here is another one. Okay. That is really about a space. But what I see here are these strong linear lines. And that is satisfying to me. 
um, along with these kind of vistas out of them. This was an art show and I was really intrigued by not just the silhouettes on the wall, but the shapes that they, that are made, I think they're made of um, wood. So there's all these kinds of, you know, finial-esque kind of ideas. And these are all, just so you know, part of, like, obviously, because I'm choosing them, they are my aesthetic. And it's important for you um, to have them. And you might be seeing a theme in these, because I already do. So these were uh, part of a perfume article, and these are bottles that you keep scents in. And I'm pretty sure that if you started to look at some of these images in the background, you'd start to see some images like this. And oh, by the way, they also relate in a way to this. But that's a story for another day. Um, here's another interior with wood grains, lots of visual texture, and lots of really strong lines, which is probably what grabbed my attention. And, oh, this one I love. I love this little photo of wrapped drinks. Now, what do you do with these about inspiration? Okay, well, I'm gonna show you a small exercise. And this is a shoe inspiration for me. So the first thing that I have done is I have traced a particular uh, last that I have. I've put it on the computer. I have replicated it four times on each side of a piece of paper. And I printed it out. Okay. Now, what I do is... I take all of these photos that I have and generally what I do is I just put them all face down and I throw them on the table and I choose one. Okay. But um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to randomly pick one here while I'm looking at you and not looking here. <gasps> and I got the one that I really wanted. I'm so excited to, to do this with you. So this is what is inspiring me. Now, what you do is and I wish I had an egg timer here. I was looking for one yesterday. I need to get one because I haven't done it with an egg timer in a while. I do this a lot though with my students. So what we do is, this is my inspiration picture. And generally what I do is 10 second images, uh, drawings, sketches on these four um, lasts. Okay, and they can be anything on these four lasts inspired by this image. I use a pen so I can't erase and I just kind of move on. So I'm going to, if you'll indulge me, I'm just going to take a second here and do a couple of these and then we'll see. So I leave it here and I look at it and then the timer goes and here's where I go. Okay, now you understand this is not supposed to be fantastic, all right? But here's what I'm doing. Um, this one, I was just doing some heel focus. So this is the wrap as it might appear on a heel, okay? Here, I'm thinking about that wrap in terms of wrapping an upper. In the bottom, I'm taking that wrap from a different direction so that it would wrap the heel and the back of the shoe. 
And here, I'm going to do the wrap heel, but I'm taking the fruit that is the, um, the garnish on the drink and thinking about it as a pull on the back of a shoe. Now, where would I go from here? Okay, well, so first of all, I like to do probably about 20, 10 second images. And it's true, I might not get 20 out of this one photo. So maybe I get five or six out of this photo, or I do two sides of a sheet, so I get eight out of this photo. And then I do choose another photo and I do eight from this photo and probably a third photo in that case. So I have 24. Um, and then what I do is I go back and I start to look at what is interesting to me that I might want to develop further. So let me show this to you, this step to you in something that I've pre-done. I don't have the photos from these and these I actually did in pencil. Okay, but I started out with sort of these four and with one of them, you might see that I started to develop. So this idea of breaking up the upper, I started to develop into a color scheme. And then I went over to my back and I started to break it up more and develop the idea further through color. Um, and I then, you know, was trying to break it down into even more color down here. On this one, I had kind of wanted to do a Union Jack idea. So I started to play with how that might come out and how it might come out in a different iteration. And it turned into something that is a flat that I've already made. Um, and then there was another idea here that started out from a quick sketch, not from a photo, that was a buckle. And you can see how I'm kind of developing it through these iterations. It's a really um, great way to take your inspiration that you have and try to really see what you can develop from those steps of iteration. So again, we start with a bunch of things, images that you just find exciting, that you have no idea what you really want to do with them, right? They're just things that for some way, some reason visually excite you. You cut them out. Yeah, put them all down. You create some sort form of template for yourself that has something to do with what you make. So mine are lasts and I use heels um, because for this particular project, I actually was doing it in the classroom more and my students were creating heeled shoes. I could easily do this for flat shoes as well, but it has um, a little extra because I also could design the heel and think about heel design here instead, okay? Once you do a bunch of these, and I, I, I stress, I'd start with some very quick sketches, always using a pen so that you're not thinking about spending time on it, erasing, etc. okay? And then I might do some longer studies too. So generally when I do this with students, we do a number of warm-ups, maybe like I said, with three different photos, we do four um, pages for me, so that's eight each, so that's 24 at 10 seconds. Then we might do another eight with a different photo or a repeat of one of those photos at 30 seconds. And then we might do one full page, so eight ideas at two minutes each. And then I would go back and look at all of the ones that I have done and put stars by the ones that I need to move forward on and actually think more about and work on as a sketch. 
And so that is one way for you to find inspiration, especially when you don't feel inspired. The uh, And this could be a color that inspires you, but in reality, since we're trying to draw something, you could draw with color, like you could take that color and you could just use that color and block it out. So there's a number of ways for you to draw and to think about drawing. Now, I also want to give this caveat. I've never really been a drawer, so I'm not really that good at it. And it's not my, it's not really my way of uh, approaching design. I'm more of a builder. I like to have a bunch of stuff in front of me and I like to build it in 3D. So I tend to build around the last with materials as part of my design development as well, rather than just working in 2D and then moving it into 3D. I prefer starting with the 3D. You can do it any way you want and these are personally just for you. Nobody's looking at them. Nobody's trying to think of them as a piece of art. It, they should not be precious to you. You should think of them as writing your grocery list or writing the 10 things you've got to accomplish today, knowing that you are going to do that very satisfying cut through when you have completed the task. They're really just to spark ideas, to get you thinking, to get you moving. And what I will say is also very true about this is if you're going to try and do this and you're very good at drawing and that's your first inclination in a way to design, then you should try throwing a bunch of materials on a table and building what you're building, okay, um, as another way for you to create inspiration. So for example, let's just say I had this. I could have a bunch of materials on my table and I could try and create my own thing like this. And you say, Anne, you're crazy. How could you do that? What could you do that with? You'd need to, you know, shape it, blah, blah, blah. Uh-uh. 10 seconds with some aluminum foil. I'm pretty sure you could get some shapes that would be pretty interesting that way. So those are all um, ways for you to kind of get yourself moving. And much like writers have writer's block, so makers have maker's block. And sometimes it's very hard to uh, understand and know the difference. So now let's kind of combine idea and inspiration and see how I might do this in terms of a design board. Now, again, I'm old school. I don't like to do everything on the computer. I like to touch things. I like things in my hands. So I'm a big believer in a design development board. And I want to show you a couple of things. I will get you closer to me in a minute. But there's a couple of things that I just want to show you. I use a working board when I'm thinking about creating a new design. And this is very typical in the fashion world. And, you know, I come from a fashion merchandising, lifestyle merchandising background. So it would also be true in the home sector that we talk about. And I know my thing is here. Don't worry about it. Okay. So at the beginning of the program, we talked a little bit about where you might sort of get ideas and inspiration. And I said, I have a lot of designers, shoe designers, that I really love and respect. And I'm on email lists for their shoes and new arrivals and things like that. So one of my favorites is John Fluvog. He has been um, designing shoes since the 80s. He's a Canadian and I am a big collector of his shoes. I love his shoes because they have very much my aesthetic. So a historical kind of retro, quirky feel. He does a lot of, um, and it's hard to see here, but this is a sculpted heel. So he'll have heel with heel interest as well as um, 
you know, doing a lot of interesting things with uppers. So what I wanted to explain to you is at this stage, this is where idea, inspiration, and trends all start to come together. And you can start to think about how you want to put them together. So this pretty much looks like one of my mules, except that I don't have one that has a square toe. However, square toes are in this year. And so clearly on my list of things, trend-wise, to be thinking about are square toes. I made a pretty interesting square toed sandal last summer and I made Are you there? Something went wrong with my stream, guys. Oh, Neil, can you see me? You can hear me. Can you see me? Because I can't see myself. Something weird went wrong with my stream. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to keep going then. So <laughs> hopefully, if, I, if you can't see me, can you just kind of... Uh, text in there and I'll just see what you're saying and I'm just going to keep going. Okay. So I hope you can see my board right now. Um, it's very funny. I just got a blip in my, in my stream where I can't see myself right this minute. So um, I'm glad you guys can see me and I'm going to keep going. So as I said, this uh, looks very much like one of my shoes. It looks very similar to what I do. And on top of all that, though, it does have this square toe. I was telling you about square toes are big trend in the fashion shoe industry for women. And that I had started to make square toed items in the summer. But now it's time for this spring for me to make a fancy square toed mule. And so what you can see is this is the other shoe that was part of what I got in my email. And so I, this shoe speaks to me. This shoe speaks to me because it is Art Deco. And it speaks to me with this little V in here. And you can see it has a heel and it has a um, strap and a buckle. And you can see that it's open in here. So theoretically on my last, I could do this because it's not a completely enclosed shoe. So it wouldn't be as hard to get off a last. But I'm thinking more of it as a mule and the idea of mule. And so what I wanted to show you is that little V detail in there, I mean, doesn't it just scream Chrysler building is all I can say. But that little V in there is something I've seen for the past year. So here is an example of that V from last year. Here is an example of that V from last year. And here's an example of not a V, but a shift, a split there so that the vamp would have some different interest. So what I'm starting to do is put this all together onto a design board. And what happens is I'll add to this as I start to figure out how I'm going to make this shoe. Um, things that I have as ideas are, for example, let's imagine that on the heel, I could actually create perhaps in a 3D heel, a heel that had these ripples in it. 
so it becomes to look like a dimensional heel. Perhaps um, I might do a shifted V here where the outside is higher than the inside, but it still has this very linear Chrysler building kind of build onto the top. And I might draw all of those things, just little notes, not full drawings, but just little notes here to uh, show you how I, uh, to, sh to remind myself, and I might even draw them on here. I might see other shoes like this that I want to put here. I might start to see colors because this is not a colorway I would want to use for this. Um, I might see a colorway that I want to put on here. I might be able to do almost anything here that I'd like to do. Um, and what will happen is as I walk past this board or look at this board every time I come down into my studio, I might take something down, remove it, and put something different in. So as I start to move on this, this guy might go, or maybe I'll cover it up with other things just because it happens to be a base here. Um, and maybe I'll add to this area. Maybe these small images that I'm talking about will be added onto here. But maybe I'll remove this guy if I determine that I'm really just going to do V's. So maybe I'll get rid of this one and I'll put it maybe back in my idea book so that later I could look at doing a split side. Um, I may do one of those inspiration activities that we just talked about, but this time maybe what I'll do is just use a, um, an Art Deco image very intentionally and think about how I could develop that into a shoe that I'd really like to have or to wear and thinking about it in terms of like when I was showing you the British flag. So maybe it's thinking about how this Art Deco could work. You know, think about it that this could go very high up on the vamp to here and the other one could be much lower or maybe the outside could be closed and the inside could be open and closed. I could think about the this as leather, open, leather, open, or leather, open, leather, open, leather. So there's ways that I could incorporate straps into it. These are all ways that I can start to look at and break down this shoe in order to consider how I might develop designing this particular shoe. I just wanted to point out that when I took this yellow one out, and again, this was from last spring, maybe even 2019 spring, because it was in a big pile that I had. One of the things for you to know is that this was from a page of probably, uh, I think, Vanity Fair, and it was a page of all yellow. So again, it's pulling out trends that are important in your particular field, your discipline, and combining it with ways to push you to rethink those trends and those ideas, be inspired by them, and then eventually turn them into your own rendition of what they are. And again, if you're in any kind of fashion or lifestyle field, and if you make anything that's fashion or lifestyle, then what you're going to need to do is you are going to need to be on trend because your customer is very likely wanting to be on trend. So let me just give you a little tip about that. And as I do that, I'm going to move myself forward and I'm going to see if I can share my screen with you uh, because I want to show you something else. Neil, I hope you can still see me. Maybe you can just let me know if you can. Um, because again, I'm flying blind here. I do not, I can't see my camera. Um, I'm going to see. Hmm. I wanted to share my screen with you and sadly, oh wait, hold on, here we go. It will allow me to. Um, thank you, Neil, for letting me know. So the thing that I wanted to talk to you about is that 
There's also a way to do this when you are, aha, I see what happened. When I am um, online and I wanted to introduce you to a tool that I like to use called Padlet. Now, Padlet is one of many, there are similar tools out there. I use Padlet just because I happened to learn how to use Padlet um, when I was using it for teaching purposes. So I'm showing Padlet on my screen now, and I hope that you will be able to see it. Padlet, and so it's P-A-D-L-E-T dot com. You will go to Padlet. You will sign up for Padlet. You will then be given an inordinate amount of settings to go through when you start your first Padlet. Okay, so you can do, this one is called Art Deco. It's a shoe inspiration. I didn't put my icon there. You can see that it has a unique address and you could share this with other people who are part of Padlet. You can have wallpaper, a color scheme, etc. Now I have already chosen my type of Padlet and I want you to understand this because it's very, very important. The Padlet you want when you are doing a design board is called Canvas, C-A-N-V-A-S. That allows you to move freely items around on the board. So that's what's really super important. Now, what I wanted to kind of talk with you about is you can cut and paste a web, web link and then it will take you back out to that web link. So it's a great way to gather inspirational spaces and ideas. You can also, so one of the things that I do is I go to Google and I did Art Deco images. I then would screenshot that Art Deco image and then drag and drop it. And here's this one Oop. from my desktop into my Padlet. And so um, what I wanted to say is, for example, remember I said when I was looking at the John Fluvog shoe, I wouldn't use those color combinations, but say, boy, I really love this color combo. So what it also allows me to do is I can take this one, right? And I can, um, also add, I can edit the title to this one. And I could say possible color combo for Art Deco Mule. Done, right? So now I can move this guy around if I want to. Whoop, let me go here. And now you see it has its own title. And I can sorry, pull this out over here. I also really like this guy, even though it's a light, I do like the colors that are here. So this whole area can now become just my color part of the board. And this could be my design. And I could go back to this particular board. Um, again, this is like my hands-on board. I do one here as well. And what you can also do with this board is you can actually, I just have to figure out where, I'm sorry. You can save this or print this as a um, JPEG or a PDF, I believe. And that's another way you could share it with other people, but you could also um, print it and then put it back on your board. So um, we are at about 
an hour, uh, um, I'm sorry, about 45 minutes. And I wanted to leave a little bit of time to see if there were any comments or questions on what we've done. Um, Neil, if you have some, if you'd like to type them in or not, that's fine. I'm just going to recap again what we did today so that um, you will be able to see exactly what we covered. So again, today's topics was ideas and inspirations. And what I started with was where do I get my ideas and inspirations? And I showed you books, book terrific. And these would be books in my field, shoes. They might be about shoes. It might be about fashion. It might be a shoe designer. So those items would be what I actually um, work with and I'm working with. I also use catalogs that come to my house and magazines. And of course, I could also go to Google and start looking through what is there. I can start looking through what comes into my um, email. I can look at um, competitors' websites, etc. So we have all of those ideas. I pull all of those items out and I cut them down where it's necessary. And then I go to work in my idea book. And in my idea book, I paste down ideas. I group items and I sometimes write notes. I then review this book probably once every week, once every two weeks, definitely once a month. I absolutely go to my idea book when I'm thinking about a new design or I'm feeling stuck because this too can start to give you an idea of what you might be doing. The other thing that's really great about this idea book is if you keep it, and again, this is probably three years on, maybe two or three years on, um, I do a, what it's actually doing is it's showing you trends. It's showing you how a trend starts. So everything that I've put in here, if I start to see now things that were from a year ago, that trend is continuing. So it's a great way to do it. Um, Neil, yeah, I think the um, idea of commonplace books is important. And yes, I know you and I come from the non-digital era. So I think that the digital student would likely be looking at lookbooks online from designers that they like, things that they get about new arrivals, or going to shops online to also look at what's out there right now. And again, you can use Padlet to collect all of that information so you don't have to make a handmade item. That Padlet can become something that is like your idea book because you could have all your ideas on the Padlet and you can keep it um, up to date, if you will. Now, I would also say that one of the things that's important for you to do if you are a digital native is not to eschew books and magazines and print materials because those materials are also, there's something very different about seeing a photograph in print than on the screen. And I liken it to this kind of comment. When I was a student and I was learning art history, we had slides that were projected onto a screen. So I want you to imagine paintings projected onto a screen they were all the same size relatively on that screen because the slide projected at a relatively similar size. So if you had a close up of something that was the size of a postage stamp and you projected it on a screen, you could also project something that was as big as a wall close up on the slide screen 
and the two look the same. So sometimes I never got size contextualized. You also miss a lot even in a photo from a real thing because you don't necessarily see all the digital texture and I mean the visual texture in a digital representation. So actually though, having a book and going to a library and just looking through books is something that also is a tremendous thing to do or just a bookstore or a used bookstore because you'll find some beautiful treasures there. Um, so we have our idea book, just again, just having an idea book that I think is really important. And then if we need some inspiration, again, we can go online. We can even go into our photos or we can go to magazines or something that comes through. This could even be junk mail. And you could pull out visually stimulating images to you. Just things that you like for whatever reason. All right. You don't have to think about why you like them. I was just explaining to you some of the things that seem to draw me in strong design. And then you can make a mock-up of whatever it is that you make, repeat it. Again, if you draw on the computer, you can do this on the computer. But the idea here is, is that we're doing some very quick inspirational sketches. We do 10 second ones. We do a series of 30 second ones. We do a series of two minute ones. And then we go back and look at everything that we've created and we start to choose which ones we think have ideas that are interesting to us that we're going to move forward with. So if you're stuck, again, those inspiration exercises are something that will make it very quick and very easy for you to do. Then um, I put it all together for you in what I like to do, which is my design board. And I'm working on this because trend square toe. I know I need to do a squared toe version of my heeled mule. John Fluvog, favorite designer, always a source of inspiration and ideas for me. Art Deco, wow, can't wait, all right, has this V noticed this V right away and knew I had been seeing it for several years because of my idea book. I have photos that show various ideas about what to do here. Two show the V, one shows a split. So all of this is giving me ideas of where to go with it and how to think about it. Then I knew that this was Art Deco. So what I needed to do was go online and look at some Art Deco. So I shared with you uh, my Padlet. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go back to my Padlet. So again, this is Padlet.com. You will sign up for your free, it's a freebie. Um, your free account. With your free account, you do get a limited number of Padlets. I think it may only be three. And actually, a lot of you, you know, I do know where you'd go to do this on um, online. Pinterest would be a great place for you to do this. And you could also collect your inspirations on Pinterest. I have not warmed to Pinterest personally. Um, and I'm not sure how much dragging and moving about you can do on Pinterest, but what I really like about Padlet is um, I'm very familiar with it and I use this very much as an organization and design tool. So when you are doing a design board, what you will do is you will use the canvas style, C-A-N-V-A-S, because it allows you to move things around. You can gather any websites that have information, <coughs> excuse me, and then you can do some screenshots and drag and drop them. And then you can organize them in different ways because as you can see, these two actually do work together. We've got the black and gold going on here, all right? And what is very interesting here is that we've got kind of a gray, uh, a nude, like a mushroom, and some oranges here, 
which are very, very me. I can double click on it and get the highlight of it. And you'll see that there's some interest in here that is kind of similar as well in terms of the colorway and also this arced shape here is this arc shape here. So there are some design connections here that are pretty interesting. So the way that I got that was I did some um, searches for Art Deco furniture and architecture, generally where I look for a lot of my inspiration, furniture, architecture, landscape. And uh, then I Googled some imagery, okay, and I screenshot it and put it onto my canvas. And now I'll start to play around with that. Now here's what I would do and what I will do because I happen to really like this colorway. I probably will print this and put it up on the design board, the live design board. Okay. And you can share that with any, with various people. You can also save it and print it out. You can keep it for any way to go with it. And these are the ways that you can deal with your ideas and your inspiration. So I hope that you have really enjoyed um, this week talking about this. And I will put it up on YouTube for you to review. And I'll look forward to seeing you for next Monday's. Monday Mission. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for attending.